Welcome to the Mornings at the Museum. My name is Cynthia Cutting and I'm the director here at Museum of the White Mountains. This time at Mornings at the Museum, we're going to talk about this exhibition called New, the annual PSU Art Faculty Exhibition. So this year we have 11 faculty artists participating in the exhibition, ranging from printmakers to painters to sculptors and to an installation. Very cool work. If you were with me in the museum, what we would do is we would do a tour of the exhibit together and then we would focus in on two, three artists' work to really discuss in depth. And we're going to try that in a virtual way. We're welcomed into the exhibit by these three works by Pamela Anaser. Amazing, right? So they have lots of movement. They seem to go together. They seem like a series um, that belong as a group. They're so striking right from, the, from far away. I really appreciate the lines, the colors, the shapes, the movement in them from afar. Now let's step closer. As we step closer to Pamela's work, we begin to see that the texture, the lines um, that are making the overall impact are made up of lots of things pushed together. And there's layers of colors. Now you begin to see how that is happening. Step even closer, and you'll be able to see that those lines and colors and shapes are formed by words. Amazing. I love how this breaks up when you get closer. And you can see um, the larger text, the white against the other colors, and then these mixtures of blues and oranges and blacks in, in, of text. What's interesting about these is that these are actually folk tales from Iceland, where Pamela spent some time. So each of these separate um, works are separate stories, separate folk tales that she gathered when she was there. And they are becoming like landscapes, like images that are expressing the, the idea of these um, places in, in Iceland, along with the actual story. Now let's turn to the work by Kimberly Ritchie. We'll start by making a list of what it involves. This work could be identified as an installation because it involves three-dimensional experience. So there's pieces that are on the wall, and on the floor, and they come out into space, and you have to kind of walk around. So that makes it an installation. So let's see what we have here. I notice three lines coming down from the wall to the floor. I notice there are actual rocks on the floor. I notice that the lines are not flat on the wall, that they come out, they have a dimension. And now as I look closer, I can notice that those three lines are made of paper, and the paper has been folded and unfolded. So it seems to kind of flow um, from the wall to the floor. The rocks are arranged in kind of a grouping at the bottom, kind of a stopping place. It's interesting. And then if I look closer, if I step a little closer, I can see that the lines are made up of not only the paper folding, but also there are maps, and the maps have been changed. So they've been cut, they've been collaged together, they've been reformatted to make them into something different. So they're not exactly depicting one particular map anymore. They're definitely combining together. Now looking closer and looking at the label for this one, it identifies Icelandic rocks and altered maps. So Icelandic rocks. And I happen to know that Kimberly has actually visited and spent time in Iceland. So these are authentic rocks and probably now we can assume that the maps also are maps of Iceland. So now we have what, what is involved in the making of this work. Now do, what do we think is going on here? What is Kimberly talking about? I'm noticing that she's kind of created a, a new landscape, kind of as she shapes the paper and cuts it, and as she adds the rocks, she's setting up a kind of experience of land or ice or water to me. So it seems like a landscape. It also seems like there is some water involved or something, and it almost feels like the shapes of, that she's cut out of the maps, it feels like they are flowing like a river or like melting down, which is really interesting. 
I know that Kimberly is an environmentally concerned artist, so I'm wondering what she's thinking about these melting of, of glaciers. Is that what we're talking about? Or are we talking about the, the changing landscape in Iceland that might be occurring due to climate change, perhaps? Let's look at Philip Ingwood's two paintings called Sea Inside series. Let's first start with the one at the left. Make a list of what you notice about this painting. First of all, it is a painting. It's acrylic paint. I notice uh, a horizon line. I notice lots of color arranged in kind of almost stripes, but then there's bigger brush strokes uh, in there. I see um, dark places, light places, modulation of color, different shades of colors in there, and lots of layers. Now that we've made a list of what we notice, how are we feeling about what, what this means? What is this about? What do you notice about it? To me, the horizon line suggests a landscape of some sort. The brushwork, to me, suggests waves. Um, definitely um, seems to be water, which goes with the title, which is called Storm Rolling. I really like the, um, the depth of color, the, the bright areas, like the sun is hitting a storm-filled sea, the sun is hitting in some places, and in other places you can tell the, the dark part of the water. Now let's look at Philip's second painting here. It's quite different, isn't it? Again, let's make a list of what we notice. Again, similar um, lines of color across. Um, different uh, lights and darks, um, layers of color. We can see drips. We can see through to the underneath of the painting, which is cool. And now what do we notice about the feeling in this painting? How is it different from the one on the left? To me, it's definitely much more calm. It's more stripes. You can still see um, various shades of color and depth in the what I perceive as sea, just the calm after the storm kind of feeling. Um, and yeah, together. So Philip and Tensies to be seen together and kind of the during and the after of a storm, which I totally get and appreciate. I love his interpretation of color, like not being tied to realistic colors of waves and, and ocean, but still referring to things that you might see in um, waves in real life. Like, what if this was at sunset time? You would absolutely pick up colors like pinks and oranges and yellows in the sea and the reflections. But he's let his mind go loosen up and be able to, you know, paint those in a much more uh, vigorous and, and um, abstract way. Thanks for coming. Hope you enjoyed it. And I look forward to seeing you here at the museum when we're open again. Until then, please enjoy our many online exhibitions and activities.